Hello friend, welcome back to the grow room. We are gonna be starting all of these perennial flowers and a couple annuals, but mostly perennial flowers that we put in the refrigerator over a month ago. It's been about a month and a few days that we went ahead and we cold stratified a bunch of seeds. And today's the day that we are gonna start planting those out. I did wanna mention that I got two coats of paint on this shelf and I just went ahead and put it here to get it out of the way. So this is now done. We're not exactly sure what we're gonna do with these floors in here. Josh is waiting to hear back from the home improvement store to, for them to give us options. So what I did to prepare so we can get started today is I have not assembled these cabinets back together, but I just took a folding table and I laid it here. And this is what we are gonna use to start our seeds on so that I could get my heat mat back out. I have yet to finish painting back there, but we'll get to it. So I wanna give you an update here real quick. I was out here for hours over the weekend, just me, myself and I up potting a few things and it felt incredible to be out here and I just wanna give you a few updates. You can see this is the celery act and this is celery. If you look real close, we started the celery act and celery in mini soil blocks. And I went ahead and I made the bigger size soil blocks and I put the celery act and celery in each one of these. And then here we have, I had to write a new, this is the Ponomac Berry Mixed Snapdragons. I went ahead and I got these up potted as well. We've got great germination on our peppers. I think all of our peppers and all of our dahlias have almost germinated. I have almost 100% germination on my dahlias. Look at how healthy these plants look. The stock and everything is just incredible. There's maybe two or three of each full tray where I didn't have one germinate. So I am so happy with that. The tomatoes over here have just started sprouting. So I have the plastic wrap on most of it. I up potted all of my eucalyptus. So those are up here. I've got some here and then some elsewhere. Oh, this is parsley and bachelor buttons and sweet william a ton of germination on peppers up here these are mostly hot peppers in this tray over here we've got some tomatoes that are just starting to sprout more snapdragons i up potted this is the maiden butterfly here's more snapdragons these are my white snapdragons i up potted these are the butterfly snapdragons and they're just looking so happy now that they have more room I can put these out in the garden here pretty soon. This is cauliflower and cabbage. More snapdragons, this whole tray is snapdragons. Over here, we have some cosmos starting to sprout. The onions need a haircut. Down here is where I have more of my eucalyptus, two different varieties. And then this is just a bunch of hodgepodge of different things in here. We have tarragon and lemongrass, straw flower and a bunch of fun things that are starting to sprout. Down here we have more onions that need a haircut. Basil, lots of basil has sprouted. Our just plain Genevieve basil, our purple basil, our lemon basil. More snapdragons and more dahlias. This is what all the snapdragons look like before I up potted them and I still need to get to this tray so I'm gonna have this be a goal today I think to up pot this tray and then over here we have our pansies and then all of these little guys are petunias. A lot of these petunias are actually gonna be going in the green stalks along with a lot of these babies. And speaking of green stalks, I just got two new green stalks. These are the basket weave green stalks. These are a brand new design. And I want to thank Green Stock for reaching out to me and offering to sponsor today's video. You all know that I have been using my Green Stocks for the past three years. And when they offered to sponsor a video, I was honored. They are having a huge sale right now with the basket weave pattern that's brand new. So I'm gonna set my two up so you can see the difference between the original green stock size and the leaf. And you can see how beautiful 
this pattern is. I went with the same color of planters that I have with my other green stalks. So these are six total green stalks I have now. I've been kind of collecting two each year, it seems. They're very easy to put together and obviously there's no soil in them because I'm not gonna be planting in them quite yet. So here you can really see how beautiful the basket weave is up close. And this is the leaf, and so it's a smaller container. And there are 42 slots, so you can put 42 plants in two square feet with this planter. And with this one, this is their original. You can see they're quite a bit deeper, and you can put 30 plants in two square feet. This basket weave pattern is currently on sale today, March 19th, through March 26th. It is 35% off, and if you use code BECKY, you get an additional $10 off. On orders $75 or more, the link for this green stock sale will be the first link down in the description box. It's exciting to dream about what these are gonna look like this summer. We've already started quite a few things that are gonna end up in these planters. And so now let's go ahead and get started on some more things that are gonna end up in these planters and in the landscape. I have, I believe, nine or 10 different baggies here that we started cold stratifying which means we took the seed and we dampened a paper towel. And you'll see here, we've got seeds in here and they have not germinated yet. They've been dormant even though we dampened them, but we put them in the refrigerator, they're dormant. So what we need to do now is aliven these seeds. But before we can <laughs> aliven them, I need to make a bunch of soil blocks. So I am out of all of my trays that I have. So I actually do have a few more trays on their way, but I also have these trays. So these were a gift and I have not used them yet. And I am gonna use them today for these cold stratified flowers. So I'm going to take a minute and grab my compost, which I have already moistened yesterday, but it's dried out a little bit. So I need to add quite a bit more water. and get that in here. I'm gonna mix this up. What I have found when it comes to making soil blocks is that it does help if you let the soil sit and hydrate. Over the weekend when I was in here making soil blocks for up potting my snapdragons and eucalyptus, it was the first time I used cold water. I've heard you, you don't like me putting boiling water in this beautiful compost. So I, I just used my cold hose water, but what I noticed is that it had a harder time making really good soil blocks. And I think it's because I did not let the soil sit. Normally, when I put that hot water in here, I let it sit for a good half an hour or so, so that it can fully hydrate. And honestly, it can cool down so that I can touch it. And so what I'm gonna do is get this moistened, let it sit. We're gonna go inside and start some pizza dough because we are gonna make cinnamon roll pizza pockets. No, we're gonna make pizza in the shape of a cinnamon roll. So I don't know what you would call that. I just saw a reel on it and we're gonna attempt to make it for dinner tonight. So. Now that I've got this mixed in here, let's go inside, get some dough made up, and then we'll come out to start soil blocking. I also should grab some pizza sauce and get this thawing while we're doing the rest of the other things we're doing today. <laughs> to thaw my pizza sauce, I just put my container in some warm water so it'll be thawed by the time we're done. And I'm gonna get going on the dough here. I would use a dough hook, but my dough hook, this part is chipping. And so I went ahead and threw that away and I've got another one coming. So I'm just gonna use my paddle attachment because that's what I have. And add some yeast. I need to feed that with a little bit of honey. I really like what honey does in dough. I used to use sugar, but now I almost always use honey instead. I'm gonna mix this together and let this sit for a few minutes. 
while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna fill up my bread flour. I'm gonna use this bread flour first. I've been experimenting using bread flour and I'm really liking it, what it's doing to my bread products. So I had to get another bag. And I'm gonna use a little bit of whole wheat bread flour and just white bread flour. So we're gonna use a combination of these two flours. I'm not following a particular recipe. I'm just getting inspired from what I saw on Instagram. So we're gonna start with that bread flour. Add a little bit more. And then I'm gonna start with maybe about a cup of whole wheat bread flour and a couple tablespoons of a good high quality olive oil. I've never used a paddle attachment to make dough before, so this is gonna be interesting. I could have pulled out my Bosch, but I did not think about that till just now. And that's pretty liquidy. Okay, whole wheat flour takes time to hydrate, so it's hard to know exactly how much flour to add right away. So I'm gonna let this sit for just about 10 minutes, and then I'll mix in more flour if it still feels too sticky. I have no shredded cheese in my refrigerator, so this would be the perfect time to go ahead and get some shredded cheese made up. I don't have a ton of ingredients other than shredded cheese to put in this pizza. Oh, I have some pepperoni and salami, actually the last little bit that we didn't use for the party. I have some green onions that need to be used. We'll use those. That's a good find. Strawberries are not gonna work. Cheese. So it'll be a pepperoni salami green onion and cheese. What would you call those? They're not cinnamon. Pizza rolls, because you would call it jelly rolls if you put it with jelly, and I'm gonna be making it out of pizza, so just pizza rolls, I guess. I just washed my green onions. Now I'm gonna get this Parmesan cheese shredded. I'm just gonna shred the whole thing. I don't think I'm gonna need all of this, but I don't wanna shred it again, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get it all shredded. I think it needs a little more flour, not too much more, maybe about a quarter cup. I'm gonna mix that in, and then I'll probably end up having to hand knead the final bit. After I mix that flour in, I only let it mix in about half of what I added because I thought it was pretty good and I didn't want my dough to get too dry. So this looks perfect consistency. So I'm just gonna knead this a little bit here. Oh, you know what I just remembered? Let me knead this and I'm gonna grab one more thing we're gonna put in our pizza rolls. I'm gonna pop this dough right back into this bowl and cover it. I've got sun-dried tomatoes. I forgot I had some cowboy candy, which are pickled jalapenos, a sweet pickled jalapeno. So that's gonna add a little bit more to our pizza. I'm gonna get this sliced up. It's probably gonna take, I don't know, an hour or so for that pizza dough to fully rise the first time. So I think I can get all my soil blocks made in that amount of time. So that's got a bit to go. So let's go make a bunch of soil blocks. I am not gonna be able to make soil blocks at this height. It's way too tall for me. So I'm gonna use this step stool and I'm gonna use my soil blocker that has the round inserts. And I didn't wash this soil blocker after I used it last, which is pretty disappointing. Not good practice or best practice. So I've got these round little inserts, and those are what I like to use when I'm seeding. Now, when I was doing soil blocks to up pot, I did wash this soil blocker after. You can see these are square. These little squares perfectly fit my little soil blocker, but there was definitely a learning curve getting nice, beautiful soil blocks with those 
because the walls are a lot thinner around the squares. I'm gonna take my seeds off here. I've got my trays. It's pouring today, so I can't do this outside. Yeah. The perfect little soil block. So I'm gonna do this a bunch more times. You've seen me make soil blocks lots of times. So I'll be back when we start planting seeds. Okay, so I've got four trays here and I've got all these flowers that I wanna get started. So let's see how many more I need to do. So what I'm gonna do is lay them out and just see how many I think I'm going to want to plant of each one. I need to make at least one more tray. If I do three rows of two, five each, so that'd be 15 of each. So I'm gonna get this one more tray done, and then I need to go inside and check on the dough and see what that dough is looking like. So I just basically ran out of soil. I'm not gonna be able to make another tray which is fine because I think that we'll be able to get enough planted just like this. I have all my soil blocks made. I'm still not 100% sure exactly what I'm gonna be planting and how much of each, but what I do know, because I just checked on it, I have got to roll out the pizza. Pizza rolls, I gotta roll out the pizza rolls. I'm looking for my silicone mat to lay out to roll my pizza on. I will just improvise and use a piece of parchment. So this is the dough, it's doubled in size. that's about as even as I'm gonna get it. So what we're gonna do is take some of my pizza sauce and put this down. It's not fully thawed yet, but I'm not gonna use the whole thing. So I'll just get the parts out that have thawed. Oh man, this pizza sauce is so good. I just had a little taste of it. This pizza sauce recipe is from a cookbook called Freeze Fresh, I think. One, it's one of my friend's cookbooks and I got it last year and it is incredible. That's where this recipe came from and I'm gonna be making a lot of this pizza sauce this coming growing season and I can link her cookbook down below. I'm in love with it. So now that we've got our pizza sauce down, I'm gonna add our cheese. The reason I sprayed the bottom of this is I just had this feeling that there was a high likelihood that there could be some stickage when this cheese kind of oozes down and cooks out of it. And I'm gonna add quite a bit of onions because we love onions. And they smell incredible, they're pretty potent. I might be filling this a little too full, I don't know. <laughs> and then we've got sun-dried tomatoes. So Josh's favorite pizza topping combination is onions, peppers, and sausage. But I don't have all of those ingredients, so I'm just using what I have today. And we've kind of fallen in love with sun-dried tomatoes because we love that marry me chicken recipe. So I think he will be super happy with this as well. And you could stop right here if you wanted to make this vegetarian. But I think 
I'm gonna add the pepperonis and salamis that I have left over from the party. Just because, oh, okay. I was gonna say just because I only have a few left and I only have four. So, or no, look at that. I've got six. So this was perfect to use this up in this application. I think I'm gonna leave the cowboy candy off and I'll add that to my own because I kind of want the whole thing to be the same just so that I don't have to try to remember this side has jalapenos and that side doesn't because I know Josh would prefer no jalapenos. I'm just rolling this up just like you would a cinnamon roll. Okay, this made a lot. So I think I'm gonna need more than just this one nine by 13. I was gonna cut this into nine, but I think it's gonna make more than that. Maybe not, I don't know, we'll see. I could bake it like this and it would be stromboli basically. Maybe I could cut this into nine. Yum. So it looks like I'm gonna need one more baking dish, I think, to bake those. I'm gonna push these down just a little bit because that's what I do when I make cinnamon rolls. I just added a little bit of cooking spray to this nine by nine. And I'm gonna get these in here. I just kind of smashed these ones down as well. And I'm gonna let these rise for a good half an hour or so before I bake them. I'm gonna bake them, I think, 350 because they're gonna take a while to cook all the way through. I usually cook pizza at like 425, but that's obviously a lot thinner crust. Now, I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 there, which is obviously more than we can eat for dinner tonight as a family of three. But the reason why I am making so many, this is what I'm thinking at least, is I just got an air fryer and probably the number one thing you all told me you like to use your air fryer for is to reheat pizza. I can't tell you how many times I read that. And so obviously this is not pizza, these are pizza rolls, but I figured they would warm up in the air fryer just fine. Now when I make pizza, none of it ever goes to waste, ever. And so I don't think these are gonna go to waste either. We'll eat them for dinner tonight and then lunches. So now we're gonna go back out and actually start planting seeds. I'm going to bring out my stool again so that I can sit down and think this through a little bit and figure out how many of each thing. Now, a lot of these are perennials. So all of the Rebecca are perennials, the Echinacea is perennial, the Maximilian Sunflower is perennial. And so they will come back year after year after year. So my plan is to plant a lot of these in my landscaping. At least that's what I'm thinking. And so that's why I'm planting so many of these because if I plant them once, I can enjoy them. Yeah, all of these that I have laid out, if I plant them now, I get to enjoy them for years to come. And so I, I need more soil. I only have one more bag of my Vermont compost. And so I really need to get more of that. That's, I've been stressing about that actually a little bit because I need to up pot those snapdragons and I've up potted everything so far in my Vermont compost. And so I'm running out of it. I only have one bag left and it works really well for soil blocking. I've tried soil blocking with other soils and it's been a disaster. They don't stick together and then they turn hard as pucks or it, yeah. So I think what I'm gonna do is I've got some other soil that I got for the green stalks. It's what green stock recommends you plant in their green stalks. It's a frog mix. Okay. Let me grab a bag. It's called Happy Frog. It's not made with frogs or anything. It's just the brand. And I have used this in my green stalks and I've used other soil in my green stalks. And my plants did the absolute best when I used this. So I can link this because this is from Amazon. This stuff is really good. Um, I was just rereading the outside of it. So I think I'm gonna use my one last precious bag of Vermont compost to make soil blocks when I start more things. And then when I up pot these little guys, I will use that frog mix. Now some of them you can see 
there's like five plants in that. And that's very tedious to up pot versus one like this. This is really easy to up pot because there's just one little guy there. So the reason I'm telling you all that is I've got a few more things that I wanna start that I didn't make soil blocks for that maybe tomorrow I'll make more soil blocks and get those started. I was just stressing if I, what I should do there. And I think I have a plan. This is gonna be for up potting and for filling my green stalks. And my one precious bag of Vermont compost is going to be for making soil blocks tomorrow to start some of these guys. So let me walk you through and show you what I've got here and remind you of all the colors so you can see what all these are supposed to look like. So some of my absolute favorite flowers are Rebecca, and all of the Rebecca that I'm gonna be starting this year I think are brand new to me. I tried to start a bunch of them in previous years, but I didn't have good germination because I didn't cold stratify them. So I've got Cherokee Sunset here, and I'm gonna do five, well, no, I'm gonna do three rows of five, so I'm gonna do 15, hopefully, plants of that. I have Cherry Brandy, Rebecca, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I think with all of them, I'm gonna do three rows of five. So, did I say 20 plants? That's 15 plants, right? Five, 10, 15, yeah. So over here, we've got some cone flower. This is Paradise Super Duper. And then here is another cone flower, and both of these are super pretty. Cone flower and echinacea are the same thing. You can call you know, a cone flower an echinacea. Up here, I have a pink and white mix echinacea. Here I have green twist. Now I have this actually in my garden right now, and that is gonna be blooming. The echinacea or cone flower typically does not bloom until the second year. So even though I'm planting the echinacea and coneflower this year, they're probably not gonna give me any blooms until next year. Now, my one echinacea that I planted out in my garden last year bloomed on me the first year, but the other years in the past that I've planted it from seed, it's taken two years for it to produce a flower. Both of these Rebecca's are the ones that I'm the most excited about. And we've got the Goldstrom and the Sahara. These are so stunning. They're like my favorite type of color of flower. I love the rich, dark, kind of fall colors. And so I'm excited to see if we can get 15 plants of that. And then this is another Rebecca here. So that's my final Rebecca that I'm gonna be planting. And then this is something, I actually bought this seed. I got this one from Johnny Seed, but I also bought it from Amazon. <laughs> I got it from two different places. And this is a perennial sunflower, which is crazy. I had no idea that you could get a perennial sunflower. So we're gonna see if we can get any of those to germinate. And then I cold stratified both of these, but I don't have soil blocks for them yet. So I am going to do an entire tray of this variety of lavender. This is kind of a smaller lavender. It gets about 12 to 18 inches. And then this lavender variety is the most typical lavender variety for soap making it said on the back of this. And so I am going to do an entire tray of this variety of lavender. I'm gonna put these like this. And then I've got Aster Rose and Aster Violet. And I'm gonna put these here. I'm gonna do three rows of five of each of these. I put that there so that I don't have to think about how many I'm gonna be starting. These were some that I was cold stratifying, but I already have this white one in this mix. And then I have this one right here. These are the ones I got off Amazon. I have one more thing I'm cold stratifying, and that is poppy seeds. And not just the flower variety of poppy, but actually, poppy seeds. I got poppy seeds at the grocery store and I threw those poppy seeds in my refrigerator. And I am hopefully going to get, see, I don't even know, maybe I don't even have enough seed for 15. I am going to see if I can get poppy seed, the poppy plant to grow, and then I can harvest the poppy seeds. One, two, three, 
So I have 22 seeds here. I'm gonna plant all the seeds in here. So some of the holes are gonna get one, some of the holes are gonna get two. And before I plant anything, I need to write down what I am planting. And all my stuff is discompobulated from the move. You know what I could do? Let's make it. Let's see it in there. So all of these that I have here, I'm gonna be doing three and three. So it's gonna make it pretty easy to label. Today is three, it's the 12th. And this is going to be a cone flower. This is also a cone flower. I'm gonna start with one seed per hole, and then I'm gonna go back and double up on the ones that I have extra. Just so that I get all of them planted and I really want to have good success with this. So now I'm just going to take my pen and fill in those holes and that way I know where I've already planted. Okay, there we go. We got that one done. So now we're going to do these. So this is the echinacea seed and I think it has a like hard cover and I think the seed is actually inside there because you can see it starting to split. So I'm glad I chose to do the paper towel method so that the seed did absorb some of this liquid or the water and so it'll hopefully germinate because of that. So I'm just gonna cover these. So I was a little worried this was gonna be moldy, but I think it's just the seed, so I think we're good. Okay. Every year I garden, I learn more and more, and I realize that you know, this whole thing, gardening just takes time to learn. Every plant needs different things and we all can't learn it at one time. And one thing I did not understand the first three years of gardening is that some seeds need to be cold stratified. And that's what I've been talking about. And basically what you're trying to do with the seeds that like to be cold stratified is you're trying to mimic winter. They like to be in a cold environment for an extended period of time. So they think that they have gone through winter. And then when you put them in soil and you give them warmth, they think that it's spring and they go ahead and germinate on you. So I have started Rebecca and coneflower or echinacea in the past, and I have had some success. I have had some germinate, but the germination rate was so incredibly poor that I'm hoping that doing this experiment will ha uh, help with the germination rate. And it's been about a week since I put these seeds in this soil, and I am starting to see some germinate. It's too soon to know if my germination rate is gonna be great or if it's just going to be okay. And so I'm glad that I did take this extra step to cold stratify. And when I looked at ways to cold stratify, there were so many different ways. You could just take the seed packet and pop those in the fridge and let the seed packet sit in the fridge. You 
You could do this method where you sprinkle the seeds on paper towels and you get the paper towel wet with some water. You put that in a Ziploc bag and you let that cold stratify in the fridge for at least four weeks. A lot of resources said four to six weeks, but I did four, a little over four weeks. And then you plant them. And then there was other ways where you could actually plant your seeds in your soil blocks or in the container you wanted to start them in. And you could pop the soil and everything into the fridge. And I didn't want to put soil in my fridge, so I went ahead and did the paper towel method. I was worried though that the, the moisture might cause my seeds to rot. And so every time I opened one of my little Ziploc bags, I was concerned that there could be mold or something in the bag which would probably you know cause my seeds to not germinate but so far no mold or anything and it seemed like a pretty easy way to cold stratify i got all these trays seeded i don't know where my vermiculite is it's somewhere but i think in all the moving it grew legs <laughs> so i'm just gonna get these moistened here and then when I find my vermiculite, I'll go ahead and top dress this with vermiculite. I really like these trays. I like the size of them. They're just really very manageable. I'm gonna cover each one of these in my plastic wrap to keep the humidity in. I have my heat mat on because now that these have been in the refrigerator for a month, a little over a month, they thought they went through winter and hopefully now they will think, oh my goodness, it is time to germinate. <laughs> or at least that's the goal. Let's see. I need one more piece. I think I'm gonna have to run inside and grab another piece because I still have what I've been using on my seeds under the grow lights. There we go, got these covered. While I was in there, I just checked on tonight's dinner and it's not quite done yet, but we've got two, four, five trays. So there's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 times five. I'm not gonna try to do that math on the spot. We have 150 hopefully plants here that once they grow up, we will be able to plant them in the garden and in the landscape and enjoy them for years and years to come. At least that's the goal. So I'm gonna pop these guys back in the fridge because I'm not ready to plant these yet. I need to make more soil blocks. And the ones that still had a few extra seeds, I went ahead and I just put them back in the zippies, zippies, <laughs> the Ziploc bags and I'm gonna pop that in the fridge and then maybe when I plant up the aster and the lavender, I will go ahead and just plant the rest of these. I don't know, we'll see what happens with that. My timer is just about to go off on my pizza rolls and these tomatoes only have a few that have sprouted and so I wanna get these closer to the light. These, beautiful, beautiful dahlias. Almost every one of them has sprouted. They're a very hardy looking plant. They look extremely healthy. So I'm gonna pot those or place those over there. And I'm gonna put these tomatoes here where they're gonna be much closer to the light. And these need a little drink of water. I had to take the plastic off. So I wanna make sure that we don't have the seeds that are trying to sprout dry out. So I'm gonna give those a drink. We were very productive out here. I still got more to do. I got more planting I gotta do. I need to up pot these snapdragons. I think I'm gonna try to do that tomorrow. I have a lot of other things that I need to do tomorrow. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all my boring office-y work done tomorrow first. And then as a reward, I'll come up here or come out here and let myself up pot these snapdragons and finish planting out the asters and the lavender.
as a treat for getting all my work done. So I'm gonna grab these and I'm gonna go ahead and get these popped back in the fridge and I'm gonna get washed up and then we're going to check out our dinner. They probably have another eight or so minutes left. I'm glad I decided to put only six in here and four in there. I'm glad I decided to cook these at a lower temperature because they are taking, by the time I take these out, I think it'll be a good 45 minutes for them in the oven. They are pretty big. I probably could have rolled it out. Oh, that's my timer. Longer to get more of them this way, but I think I'm happy with the size. I think one of those will be plenty for us. They're so beautiful. I did go ahead and top them with the rest of the green onions too, because I didn't know what I would do with just a few green onions. I think I'm gonna let them go. I think these ones are done. These are the smaller ones. Maybe I'll keep them in here. They smell incredible. The green onion in there, perfect. So I'll show you what these look like coming out of the oven. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I wanna thank Greenstock for sponsoring today's video. What an honor. You all know how much I love that product and I've been using it for years and years and years and that they wanted to sponsor today's video is a great honor. And because you show up, I was able to get this opportunity. So thank you for being here. If you want a green stock and you want the basket weave at 35% off plus $10 off, if you use code Becky, the link will be down in the description box. So don't miss out. The sale is going from now, March 19th until March 26th. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you, and I can't wait to see you next time. If you wanna watch a couple of my other videos, I'll pop them here. You can go enjoy those between now and my next upload. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.